53 with a 52. Yeah, yeah, Nick Rogers. Uh, Nick Rogers. Nick will be driving it in the heat race with Mom Tammy. will step in come feature time. We're under green. Six laps is the scheduled distance. And Henry Lane. Field. John Green right there behind him in that second spot. Barnes drops to third early here. As you see Brad Fish making a move from the back of the field. He started in position number five, looking to go around the 12 of Barnes to pick off the number three spot, and he will do so as Andrew Fish follows suit right there behind him, and the uh, the Fish clan are moving through the field rather quickly here, Bill. Good band, too. Yeah, very good band, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, Andrew and Brad Fish both with newer cars the past few weeks. Headed up to the front, John Green headed up off turn three and into the pit area. John Green from Norfolk ducking to the pit area. That's going to hand the runner-up spot to Brad Fish from Malone. And now he's going to try and reel in Henry Lamica from Burke. Henry leading the way tonight in our first qualifying heat race. And the Lamica team's got to feel great. They have had a bunch of issues the past few weeks. Got into the wall two weeks ago. Not of their own making. Had some help getting up into that. And now they're coming back right out of the box. They are up front and leading the way. Three laps in, three more to go here. Six laps, once again, is the scheduled distance. And uh, here reeling in Henry Lamico is going to be no easy task. He's got a straightaway lead now back to Brian Fish in that runner-up spot. Andrew Fish third. Good battle going on for fourth and fifth as the Barnes number 12 machine has Nick Rogers to his outside. Rogers having a good run so far. Goes alongside of Barnes in turn number three and will take the number four spot on the top side. And Barnes gets it right back in turn number four. So this is about the best battle on the racetrack as your top three pretty much spaced out now by about a half track or so as Henry Lamica is checked out on the field here, Bill. And it uh, looks like, barring any catastrophe, he might take this one home. Henry Lamica in the Bylos Farm LaBear's AI, number 55E, leading the way. Sweet Dreams, number BAR, Brad Fish runs second. And as you pointed out, the best battle on the speedway, the battle for fourth between Joseph Barnes and the 12 and the 52 of Nick Rogers. You said the back of the field didn't have great racing. Checkered flag is out on the speedway, and Henry Lamica will handily win this heat race. The first of two, I believe, for the Bandits. Brad Fish second in the B8R. Andrew Fish will come home in third and a nice run by him. Battle still for fourth and fifth here. And Joseph Barnes will get Darryl Mitchell in row number one. Row number two, the 79 of Derek Colbert in the number six of Owen White. Then rounding out the field, the number three of Pete Sinani. He's got two wins on the season. And the 63 of John Oliver. That is your starting lineup as we go racing four wide into turn number one. I promised you four. Wide, Tim, and I gave it to you at the start of the second heat race. Oh, well, thanks very much, Bill. Well, they're still stuck three wide back there. Derek Colbert wants to go to the front in a hurry. Gives Jason Christ a little bit of a shot. Pete Tsunami is going to go about three lanes lower than everybody else to try to get to the front of the field. In the midst of all that, Daryl Mitchell is going to lead lap number one here. And Colbert still wanted to go three wide down the front stretch, and he might take the lead in turn one, and he will do so as Daryl Mitchell working from the top side. Jason Kreitz right there with him. There's still three wide back there. Pete Tsunami dives low. The number three shoots up to the runner-up spot, and now he's going to reel in Colbert. Colbert has one win. Tsunami has two wins. Mitchell in the 37 has a win this year. And behind him, Jason Kreitz, Owen White have both come very close to wins but shut out of the win column so far now we've got a battle for the lead as pete tsunami swings over to turn number one pete tsunami will take over the top spot in the number three car new leader as they head down the back stretch and colbert right there behind him but the ever fast owen white is closing ever so slightly here in turn number four as the battle for fifth goes on between kreitz and mitchell mitchell won a couple of weeks ago here his first career feature win in a stock car won many kart races but i tell you what that first stock car win had to mean something to him as a good battle for the top spot once again down the back street is Derek colbert diving down low on tsunami off of turn four and Colbert and Tsunami get together trading a little paint. Colbert will take over the top spot. Tsunami drops to second. Here comes Owen White in the number six charger on the high side to challenge Tsunami for the runner-up spot with two laps to go. Well, Owen oh, White's used to that top side, of course. If you remember the old Enduro class, he put the top side to good use and uh, ran the rim to a track championship here in that division a few years back. As he works that outside groove to get by Tsunami, Derek Colbert has started to open up a little bit of a lead here at the white flag lap. Five in, one more to go, and Owen White has switched lanes here. He dives to the inside. Slide job by Owen White. 
And now Owen White shuts the door on Sonani, runs him down into the grass, blocking to hold on to the runner-up spot. A final last lap dash down the back stretch. Derek Colbert coming out of turn two. Colbert gets the win in the 79. Owen White comes home second. Pete Sonami finishes third. Jonathan Oliver, great run in fourth. Then the 14 of Jason Clayton. <laughs> Should be interesting to watch, though. You know, we could be uh, proven wrong here if, the, if this is the way our luck's going to go. Drag race down the front stretch. Nolan Swamp's car very slow on a turn four. That bogs down Joey Foster behind him as Scott Mayer takes off and running. Bennett White up to second. Trent Benedict, well, you know what? He's up to third on his initial start. Not a bad way to start things off, but here comes the 91J of Joey Foster up on the high side. And Foster's got Anderson to his inside. Anderson gets into his inside door there and about spun out in turn number four but he keeps it straight and Foster starting to charge through from the back of the pack he's already up the third here Bill but Scott Mayer is your early leader with Bennett White in the runner-up spot Scott Mayer coming off some good runs in recent weeks Bennett White challenging to the high side here comes Joey Foster we've got a three car battle for the top spot it's a dead heat at the line for that lead. It looks like Scott Mira will be your leader so far, but Bennett White, Joey Foster right there with him. Second and third as Foster digs down low on the inside. And Nolan Swamp, the uh, problem he had on that start, Bill, looks like it's continued on here through the last couple laps. And the leaders are coming up on him, so the caution comes out in the interest of safety as Nolan Swamp could not get clear. Caution on the speedway. All right, at Airborne Park, it is topless night. The Modifieds are taking the roofs off at Airborne, everybody's favorite topless night. Uh, and absolutely. the Quebec Ontario Challenge 100 lapper tomorrow night at Brockville. Great Saturday night choices. Regular show of racing at the Cornwall Motor Speedway on Sunday night. And they're going to be crowning their champions in the modified and postdoc division because uh, of the Jiffy 150 next week, right? Three consecutive Renos have killed us over there. And it's just been atrocious <laughs> to try to get races in. But looks like weather's going to be good this weekend we'll finally get one through and uh, speaking of going through Bennett White's going to go through Scott Mayer to get the number one spot Joey Foster's going to follow suit on the top side three laps in three more to go here and Scott Mayer is relegated to third and not exactly what he was looking for as Bennett White leads the charge down the back stretch. The high lane has proved to be the quick one here in the qualifying heat races. They get up high, they keep the momentum up, the RPM's up, and they move to the front, both Bennett White and Joey Foster powering around Scott Mayer for the lead. Two more laps to go. Bennett White holding on to that lead, and Foster pursuing him down the back stretch here. Foster is right there. Scott Mayer looking to move in as well. Trent Benedict doing very well for himself out there in his maiden voyage, running in the number four spot, and I'm sure getting uh, a lot of lessons here from the top three drivers on how to run this speedway. Thunder Anderson Jr. completing the field in the final lap. Drag race down the backstretch. Bennett White leads Joey Foster by half a car like but here comes Foster. Foster dives low. White trying to pinch the car down. We're going to have a battle out of turn four. Down the front stretch. Bennett White will get the win over Joey Foster. Scott Mayer finishes third. Trent Benedict will finish fourth. And Thunder Anderson Jr. in the number 30 will complete the field with Nolan Swap. Yeah, and a lot of heavy hitters in this and one. First of three pro stock heat races tonight as well. Does this not remind you of a few years back? Great to see the car counts rising. And you know, they've uh, the track owners put a lot of money into the track. And the word's getting around, and everybody is coming to race here on Friday nights. Well, great battle down the back stretch. William Adams takes the lead. Claudia Tarbo won second. Ricky Thompson from the last row up to third. Dave Papineau fourth. Thunder Anderson and Scott Kocher side by side for fifth. Mikey Blaze will complete the field as the first lap is in the books. And Ricky Thompson charging to the high side and into second as they go into turn number one. And Ricky Thompson is bad fast on that top side of the speedway as he is closing in on Adams for the lead. And he closed two car lengths right there in one corner. And he He's not done. He's going to go up to the number one spot, albeit a little contact on the way by. But excuse me. Coming through. Excuse coming through. Yeah, excuse exactly. Me. He says, I'm a man on a mission, and I'm coming through. I don't care what you have to say about it. And Thompson's going to ride off into the back stretch there with the number one spot. Well, and Thompson, multiple feature wins this year and in the hunt for the championship. And that's what it's all about. He's trying to set himself up for a good starting spot in the feature as he is battling his Uncle Louie Jackson and... 
Uh, the number 47 of Dave the Bulldog Bissonette for the track title here at Mohawk. This would be Ricky Thompson's first career pro stock track championship if he can pull it off over the next two weeks. Tall order for him, though. You got two, one, two of the best drivers in this division battling with you for a track title, and they've been there before. They know how to get it done, but Ricky Thompson has proven himself very well in this pro stock class this year. Four feature wins across the two speedways over here at Mohawk and over at Cornwall on Sunday nights. One feature win over there as Scott Kosher slows to the back straightaway, and he might be headed pit side with the 50. Five laps are down, and Ricky Thompson is trying to make short work of this heat race as Dave Papineau and Claudia Tarbell are having themselves a battle royale for that number three spot. Tarbell doing a great job holding them off down the backstretch. Well, and Claudia, in her first full season in the pro stock division, has really shown tremendous advancement. At the beginning of the season, she kind of laid back, took it patiently, but week in and week out, she's gotten faster and faster. And you see that tonight in the heat races as she's holding her own, battling Papano for third. Papano, one of the top guys in the pro stock division, having his hands full, trying to work battle with rookie driver Claudia Tarbell as Ricky Thompson gets the white flag one more time around. One more to go for Thompson. The battle is from second on back to fourth as William Adams has been working that outside groove pretty well. And Claudia Tarbell making that inside groove run very well as well as Dave Papineau in the 188. He's going to try even lower here in turn number three. Checkered flag is out for Thompson. And he will win it by a straightaway, Bill, a convincing win. William Adams comes home second. Claudia Tarbell holds on for third. Dave Papineau fourth. The legendary Thunder Anderson finishes Thunder. number 47 of Dave the Bulldog Bissonette in the battle for the championship. And the number 88 of Alan Peters completes the field. Green flag on the speedway and Jody Swamp on the gas and going to the number one spot. Billy Woodward Jr. right there behind him. And Ron Tarbell along with Rock Obain third and fourth. Dave Bissonette trying to crawl through the field as well in fifth. Alan Peters completes it up in front though. Jody Swamp has actually started to pull away just a little bit here nearly going as Billy Woodward Jr. has got the entire world behind him right there. Great battle for second. Yeah, no pressure on Billy Woodward at all. No pressure at all with only four of the top pro stocks in the North Country right on his back bumper as he tries to hold on to second. Woodward having a great one with Rod Tarbell. Then side-by-side -side rock open in the four and the 47 of Bissonette. Tarbell and Bissonette get together. Everybody looking for racing space as they come down the front straightaway. And it doesn't matter. We've seen these cars spin out you know, do full 360s in front of each other and keep on going and nobody will wreck. So these are some of the best in the area and Woodward is starting to find that out right now he's actually opened up a little distance between himself and Ron Tarbell for third right now as the Bulldog battling from the top side and it's just no room really to go for Bissonette as he makes the move to the top side trying to get underneath Tarbell down the back straightaway well, and that's it. You know, everybody seems to want to run the mid to high side of the speedway. For the most part, only Rock, o Rock Oldman runs low, and he gets into the uke tire coming out of turn four. Got pinched down there by Dave the Bulldog Bissonette. The uke tire got knocked out into the middle of the lower groove, so that brings out the caution. That was just, again... Billy King won the first one in 2000. Of course, that was with a semi-pro late model against the pro stock, so that was a bigger... That was one of the biggest ones in the history of the Speedway as the green flag comes back out. Jody Swamp, I tell you what, that car is just on a rail right now and three wide on the back stretch. Well, Bissonette thought better of it though, tucks in behind Woodward as Rod Tarbell looks to go up to the number two spot and he will do so as they head off turn number four. Yeah, this one's getting more and more interesting. Rod Tarbell shoots up to second. Great battle for third between Rock Oban, Rod Tarbell, Dave Bissonette, Alan Peters, Four cars battling for third and not too far out of striking distance for second as we're just past the halfway point on this post-hoc heat race. Two to go this time around. It's going to be an interesting two laps. And the lead is pretty much solidified right now as Jody Swamp has just checked out on everybody. Rod Tarbell started to open up a little distance between himself and Woodward as Woodward battles Rock Oban for the number three spot. Billy, or excuse me, Dave Bissonette holding on to that number five spot. Alan Peters trying to come up through and six point flag is in the air. And really the battle on the racetrack right now is from third on back to Alan Peters in six here. It's going to be a good one coming down to the finish. You know, the heat races don't pay any points, don't pay any money, but they race like it's a million bucks to win in this final lap. As Billy Woodward trying to hold off Rock Oban and Dave Bissonette. Jody Swamp will get the win. Rod Tarbell comes from second battle for third, still in the air. Billy Woodward. Three heat races once again. Bill. And a great competitive field of pro stocks in the pit area tonight getting ready to go. Eight laps will be the distance. 
pair of sixes. One in the front row, one in the back row, as the green flag comes out. And the number six of LeBrun will take away that early lead. And Harvey Arcad trying to fight back on the bottom side. Dion Oaks trying to fight his way through as well. Louis Jackson tried the outside, kind of got shut out of line there. And Corey Wheeler looking for room to go as he rounds out your top five. As the top five are pretty much right in a tight pack so far at lap number one. And it is LeBrun leading the way. Dion Oaks, Harvey Arcad complete the top three. Well, you know, those drivers were watching that last heat race from Pitt Road because they had a great view of that last heat race, and I think they all looked at themselves and said, you know, we can top that. As they are, we've got a five-car battle for the lead coming out of turn four. And Dion Oaks is your new leader, not known for his success in the heat races, although he has got a couple this year, is leading this one right now with Stefan LeBrun right there behind him in second. It's Harkett. Jackson and Corey Wheeler completing the top five as Sawadis in the number six completes the rest of the field as they come off turn number four. It is Oak still leading it here, but I'll tell you what, Harvey Arcat working that outside groove is starting to close the gap down the back stretch. He's going to make, make a race out of at least second before this one's over with. Halfway sign is out, four and four more to go, and Dion Oaks looking to run away with this one, but the best battle is from second on back to fifth here, Bill, as LeBrun has got Harvey Arquette, Louis Jackson, and Corey Wheeler right there behind him. Well, and you know, we've, we basically got, we're seeing right here in the heat race, so we got about 15 potential feature winners in the field tonight. I cannot wait to see the 20-lap feature tonight, as the pro stocks normally put on some of the best racing we'll see each and every week, and tonight these guys seem like they're definitely taking it up a notch. As Harvey Arquette and Stefan LeBron get together, LeBron does a 360 and loses the left rear tire, brings out the caution. And that was a... Uh That was a different one under on green flag action for a third and final pro stock qualifier. Dion Oaks, Louis Jackson running first and second. Harvey Arquette Jr., Corey Wheeler, and the number six X uh, completing the field of uh, number six X completing the field in this third and final pro stock qualifier. Dave Sawadis rounding out the lineup. And he just about lost it coming off of turn number two, but he straightens it back out behind Corey Wheeler. Up in front, Dion Oaks continues to lead the way with Louis Jackson right there behind him. Hard looking for room to go as well. Corey Wheeler back there in that four spot. Two feature wins to his credit this year, both at Autodrome Drummond. So Corey's having a great season up there in the only two starts he's had in 2010 at Drummond. But it's Dion Oaks, the leader, off of turn four. Checkered flag is in the air. Oaks gets the win. Louis Jackson second. Harvey Arquette Jr. third. Corey Wheeler fourth. And the numbers... First modified qualifier brings him up out of turn number four, Derek Martin and Billy Cook side by side as they dash down into turn number one. Billy Cook and Martin still side by side. Pat O'Brien goes high. Cook to the lead. O'Brien second, Roy Tarbell and Martin side by side for third. And here comes Todd Stone. And Derek Martin is right there in a big pack of wolves right now. He's just looking to get up out of the way as O'Brien digging down. On Cook to take over the lead here, and he will do so as the hit turns one and two. Cook trying to fire back on the top side, couldn't quite get the job done, but it's Pat O'Brien, your new leader, as we work in lap number two this time by. The pocket rocket, uh, actually, excuse me, Dan, Pat flying O'Brien. He got close. Yeah, I, was, I, I had the right family anyway. Pat O'Brien leads the way. The X1 of Gardner Stone goes to the inside of Billy Cook, battling side by side for second. Roy Tarbo runs fourth, Todd Stone fifth. Gardner Stone to the inside, up to the one up spot. And Gardner Stone has been coming on strong as of late here in that X1 machine. He's had a lot of good runs the last couple of weeks. And Billy Cook started to make some headway as well as he works with Tarbell down the back stretch. John Lazor just flew by Tommy Jock and Todd Stone in one corner. He goes from six up to the number four spot. He goes by Cook for third, or fourth rather, and he is not done there. Tom Jock Jr. has his hands full at number 31, darting and weaving all over the speedway. Looks like something may be wrong with that car as it is all over the speedway. Jock with a terrible bush trying to compensate in the turns, but losing a lot of ground. 
very tough to drive an ill-handling race car, especially around this place, as Pat O'Brien doesn't have an ill-handling race car at all. He has got that car hooked up to the outside part of the speedway and flying around here in that number six machine at lap six as Gardner, or Gardner Stone in the X1 holds on to second. John Lazor holding down third here. Todd Stone fourth, defending track champion Roy Tarbell completes the top five. Pat O'Brien in the Gypsum Logistics, number six, leads the way. Great run for him. The X1 of Gardner Stone in the G-Stone Motors entry, and then the Chiefs Tobacco 19 of John Lazor runs third. Todd Stone runs fourth. Roy Tarbo runs in fifth spot as we are coming up two to go, two to go. What does that sign now look familiar out in front? Pat O'Brien in a red car leading a field here at Mohawk. Takes you back to the mid-90s as O'Brien works that outside groove in the number six. White flag will be coming out this time by from Cody Superno as Gardner Stone being chased rather heavily here by John Lazor. And Lazor has come from the back of the field. He's alongside. Oh, and he catches a tire in turn number two. And... I'll tell you what, Bill, I was just about to say he was making quite a charge from the back of the field, and it all goes away on him in turn number two. Checkered flies on the speedway. Pat O'Brien gets the win. And Go Ryan on. Helm and Ryan Jacobs will lead him to the green here. They're off and running. And in a one and two, they go. Pirani tried the inside groove on Ryan Helm. Ryan Helm shut the door on him as they head down the back straightaway. Ryan Helm has the top spot. Mike Pirani right there with him in second. Here comes Todd Stewart with a bid for third. Down to the inside of Ryan Jacobs. Meanwhile, your current points leader, Kerry Terrance, battles and picks up the number five spot as we complete lap one. Mike Pirati goes to the top spot to the underside of Ryan Helm. Helm drops to second. Todd Stewart up to third. Kerry Trance to fourth. Ryan Jacobson, the 73, looks like he is a handful. As you see, that left front tire picks up the car bouncing around the speedway as Jacobs trying to set for the turns and having a challenging time of it. And Pirati still has that top spot, but Todd Stewart is flying in that M96. Of course, that car has been to victory lane already this year with Brian McDonald at the helm at Brockville earlier on this year. And Todd Stewart looking to put it back into victory lane here tonight as he's working to that number two spot and closing quickly on Mike Pirati for the lead down the backstretch. And that's it. We've got a two-car battle. Now three car battles. Kerry Terrance gets up to the third spot. Terrance with seven wins on the season. Trying to reel in Todd Stewart and Mike Ferrati in the second qualifying heat race for the modified division. And Ryan Helm back there in that fourth spot. He's got Ryan Jacobs all over him as they head down the back straightaway. Now Jacobs sees daylight, puts the nose up to the inside of Ryan Helm to try to pick off that spot. As they come down the front stretch, Ryan Jacobs will take away the number four position. And Ryan Helm falling back to fifth here, but the battle for the lead rages on down the back stretch. A couple of car lengths separate Pirani from Stewart, and then it's another six back to the 66X of Kerry Terrance in the number three spot as we work in lap number seven this time by. The Adirondack Auto, number 35, of Mike Pirati, leads the M96 tonight, driven by Brian McDonald and the, uh, excuse me, driven by Todd Stewart and the Crisco Motorsports entry. Then the Twin Leaf Gas and Tobacco, 66, of Kerry to Lance. And the Ottawa Marina, number 73, of Ryan Jacobs. Ryan Helm battling with Casey Swamp for the fifth spot. Coming up on two to go, two to go for Mike Pirati. Four-time track champion here back in the early 2000s as Pirani works that number 35 down the back stretch right on the bottom side of the speedway. That's where he is best at this racetrack as he comes off a of turn four with the lead. Todd Stewart doing everything he can to run him down. White flag is in the air, but he may be running out of time here as the laps start to wind down. Final time down the back stretch. Pilati leads Stewart and Terrance by about four or five car lengths. Mike Pilati to victory lane for the first time this season. Todd Stewart to second. Kerry Terrance runs in third. Ryan Jacobs finishes fourth. Casey Swamp fifth. Melvin Rush and Ryan Helm. And now the 95 of Rick Miller coming around to complete your field. Leading when the car broke, he looked like he was in line to win the feature. He'd love to back that up tonight with a great run as the green flag comes out in our final modified heat race. Preston Forbes gets that early, but Jeff Sykes is not afraid to go to the top side. And I'll tell you what, he made a quick move to get around Forbes as Forbes pushed up the racetrack, 
but it's Sykes, your leader, as Clayton Benedict, Preston Forbes, and Delbert Legro hold on to the top four spots. Then it's Barry Francis completing the top five at lap one. Jeff Sykes and Clayton Benedict pulling away side by side battle. Del Legro had a great run last week until he, tang he and Tommy Jock tangled with two laps to go. They dropped out of the top five in the final couple of laps. Legro on to third. Preston Forbes gets shuffled high. Something has broken on Forbes as the car will not turn. And Forbes. As Preston will Forbes has gone pits with the number 45. We're off and running again here, Bill, and Jeff Sykes making it look very easy as he gets another great restart to grab the top spot. Sykes and Benedict pick up. They laugh left off. Now Perry Francis goes to the high side of Del Legro. Francis up to third. Legro drops to fourth. Roy Delarmier and Dave Hayslip now bearing down on Legro in the battle for fourth spot. As Perry Francis does get by on the top side, he charges after Clayton Benedict as they work the back straightaway. And Francis found that slick spot over there in turn number two where a little bit of rubber has been laid down. And Jeff Sykes is not seeing any rubber right now as he is seeing a whole lot of clear racetrack in front of him as he leads the way. Car looks just a little bit tight getting into turn number three as you see him trying to get through turn number three here. The car just wants to shove up the racetrack and he has to kind of pitch the car sideways in the middle of turns three and four. But other than that, car is working very good for him at halfway. And even with it being a little tight, he's got the field covered. Jeff Sykes, great run in the Warrior Racing number four last week until he broke, picking up where he left off last week. And he says, you know, I would so love to grab a win for Junior and Tracy David. They've had such a tough year. I'd love to get them into victory lane. Oh, they came so close with Lee Lannister a couple of months ago at Cornwall, finishing second. And they picked the right horse to... Uh, take this one to victory lane because Jeff Sykes has been here numerous times. Won his first career modified feature here back in 1994 and his first career track title coming in 2003 as well. So Sykes knows how to get it done here and Mohawk as he works the back straightaway. He's almost got a full straightaway advantage back to Clayton Benedict and Perry Francis. Sykes leads then the Thompson Motorsports number 12 of Clayton Benedict. C&B Enterprises 55 of Perry Francis runs third. Then a great battle for fourth between the 71 of Del Legro, the one of Dave Hayslip, and the 22D of Roy Delarmier. Three car battle for fourth spot as the white flag comes out. And Sykes still continues to lead the way here. Clayton Benedict and Perry Francis, your top three. But the real battle is for fourth, fifth, and sixth as Dave Hayslip puts the pedal to the metal and goes right around the top side of Del Legro to take the spot. Jeff Sykes will get the win. Clayton Benedict, Perry Francis, your top three. Dave Hayslip's going to come off a of turn four with a great move to go from sixth to fourth. Del Legro. Go. <laughs> fourth sportsman heat race. Jenna David in the number two and the number 03 of Josh Jock lead the way. 27 of Sheldon Hogworth, the one of Travis back in row number two. Row number three is the 30 of Brent Kelsey, the uh, 83 of Dylan Evoy, the 01 of Chris Rabby, and the number 11K of Dylan Sallows completes the field. Eight cars starting this first sportsman heat race. And as it come down the front straightaway, it is all Jenna David right now, but Sheldon Hugworth loves this racetrack, and he loves racing here on a weekly basis now as Hugworth takes away that lead. Jenna David trying to get it back, though, in turn number four. Couldn't quite get the job done as Dylan Evoy charging hard on the back bumper of the David number two, and Evoy trying to go up to the number two spot as Brent Kelsey and Chris Rabby occupy the top five position. Dylan Evoy up to the runner-up spot. Jenna David drops to third. Brett Kelsey fourth. Chris Rabby settling into fifth spot, trying to get underneath Kelsey. Great three-car battle for third spot. Yeah, Rabby does get by Brent Kelsey on the top or on the bottom side, but Kelsey's going to fight back on the outside as they got Jenna David right there in front of him. Jenna David doing a great job out there in that number two, holding off some of the best drivers in this division here as Brent Kelsey working the top side. Rabby down low, halfway side is out here, Bill, and uh, Sheldon Hogarth trying to make short work of this heat. Chris Rabby gets underneath Jenna David for third spot. Brent Kelsey trying to follow suit. David slams the door shut. Up front, Sheldon Hubworth and Dylan Evoy running one and two. They've both got feature wins here at Mohawk. And then behind them, the driver who has set the dirt car record for wins in a single season, the 0-1 of Chris Rabby, got his 25th win on the season overall here at Mohawk last Friday night. And I think that is what put the sportsman class back on the map here at Mohawk is having a 
dirt record set here just like that and that actually put Chris Rabby 10 wins short of the all-time feature winners in the sportsman division that being Steve Hall at 85 Rabby has 75 overall as the white flag comes out, Sheldon Hugworth does have Rab or excuse me, Dylan Evoy chasing him down the back stretch. We'll see if Evoy can do anything with him as they go into turns three and four this time, right coming down to the checkers. Coming out of turn four, Sheldon Hugworth will get the win. Dylan Evoy second, Chris Rabby third. Watch the battle for fourth. Travis back gets by Jenna David on the final lap. Back gets Number nine of Christian Smoke leading the field around as the green comes out this time. And Brad Winters gets a great start there as Christian Smoke held back just a little bit and it cost him as the 92 of Winters takes away that early lead. Smoke back there in the runner-up spot. Benedict is third, followed by Burke and Steve Barber completing your top five. Barber the defending four-cylinder champion at Brockville last year. Doing very well in the sportsman car in his rookie season as he gets by the 28 of Burke to pick off the number four spot. Burke back to fifth. It's Christine Martin and Robbie Ezar completing the rest of the field as Brad Winters has the lead off turn four this time. But he does not have an easy time here. Christian Smoke let him get away at the drop of the green flag, but he's reeled him in. Christian, a rookie, has never raced anything before jumping into a sportsman car this year and has immediately proven while the genes run strong when it comes to driving stock cars. Christian, the son of Former modified star Mark Smoke. Christian having a great season now running second and hounding Brad Winters in the number 92. And he's had several top three finishes here in that number nine machine as well. Ran very well here back in June to finish third as Steve Barber pushes way up the racetrack and allowing Sean Burke to close in. And Burke's going to close in and he nails Steve Barber hard in turn number four and they both hit the wall. To go back to green, we are halfway down, four laps down, four to go in our second sportsman qualifying heat race. Brad Winters, Christian Smoke, Tom Benedict, Christine Martin, and Robbie Ezard as the green flag comes back out on the speedway. And Brad Winters does take away that number one spot. Christian Smoke is working that outside groove, and I tell you what, much like his father was, not afraid to go to the top side of the speedway and make it work. Look at him go on the top side. He's alongside of Brad Winters to try to get the lead off turn four. Drag race down the front straightaway. As Christian Smoke working the top side, Brad Winters down low. Great battle for the lead off of turn two. And a couple of second generation drivers as Brad Winters' his dad used to race here at Mohawk, as did his uncle Robbie. And now he is battling alongside Christian Smoke in the number nine. Smoke, a rookie. But driving like he's been doing this for years. As Smoke putting on a great battle, Christian Smoke challenging to the high side of Brad Winters in our second and final sportsman qualifier. And Tom Benedict back there in the third spot. Christine Martin, glad to have her back with us once again. She hadn't been back here with us in a couple of months or so. Finding a time to get up here with us, running in the number four spot in the 81. White flag is out, and the battle for the lead has subsided right now as Brad Winters has gotten the best of Christian Smoke as they work the backstretch. Final time down the backstretch. Checker will come out this time. And coming out of turn number four, the number 92 of the SUNY Canton entry, Brad Winters gets the win. Winters comes home Solanus, in the top. And alongside will be Mikey Blaze in the 37, the 88 of Alan Peters, the 7 of Harvey Arquette Jr., the 6 of Stefan LeBrun. Rockover in the number four completes the field. We are under green. Jody Swamps wasting no time going to the front of the field. And the poor stock drivers behind him wasting no time getting it mixed up. It looks like Sawad is having problems as he gets all kinds of sideways. Bottles up the back of the field behind him. Meanwhile, Swamp will lead lap number one. Claudia Tarbell, second Billy Woodward and William Adams running side by side for third. As they head down the back straightaway, it is Jody Swamp, your leader. Claudia Tarbell doing a great job so far, holding off the rest of the field in the number two spot. Meanwhile, William Adams trying the top side around Billy Woodward Jr. It's not going to work, and he loses two, possibly three spots down the front stretch as Ricky Thompson gets to the inside along with Dion Oaks in the 48, but Adams shuts the door. is able to maintain the number five spot. Only for a moment, though, as Dion Oaks gets by on the back stretch. Ricky Thompson on the charge to the low side. Thompson goes inside Billy Woodward Jr. Ricky Thompson will get spot number three as they come out of turn number four. And Jody Swamp trying to make short work of this. Of course, that brand new car he picked up a couple of weeks ago. 
Very, very quick out there in that 69 as he leads the field down in front. If he would pull off the win tonight, it would be bittersweet for him after the rough luck he's had all year. And the battle for second and the battle for fourth and fifth going on at the same time is Ricky Thompson down low on the 70 of Claudia Tarbell, but she fights him off down the back stretch. They're side by side going into turns three and four. Great battle for the runner-up spot. Ricky Thompson low, Claudia Tarbell high. Ricky Thompson will go into second as they begin lap number five. Dion Oaks in the number four spot. Then comes the 56 of Woodward. Completing your top five as William Adams, who started on the front row for this one, has slid all the way back to the number six spot with Dane Papineau seventh. The Bulldog back there in eighth. Ninth is Rod Tarbell and Louis Jackson having all sorts of issues trying to get to the front of the field as he completes the top ten in the number ten spot. Louis Jackson and Dave Bissonette both in the middle of the pack, not where they are accustomed to being. They're used to being up front early in these events. They've got a long way to go, and Jody Swamp and Ricky Thompson both stretching out big leads over the rest of the field. And Jody Swamp got the lead early right off the green flag and has not let it go since as he works down the back straightaway. He's got about a four-car length advantage on Ricky Thompson who runs in that second spot. Claudia Tarbell having her career day out there in that number seven machine, holding off the 48 of Dion Oaks for that third spot right now as Oaks rides in fourth and Woodward doing a great job as well. In the number five spot in the 56, we've got eight laps complete, 12 more to go, and Ricky Thompson is closing the gap on Jody Swamp for the number one spot. Dave Bissonette breaks free of the pack. Now he is starting to challenge William Adams for the sixth spot and Billy Woodward for the fifth spot. Bissonette breaks free of a pack of race cars. And now the Bulldog, but he's got a lot of ground to make up. Meanwhile, Dion Oaks has caught Claudia Tarno in the battle for fourth spot. Dion Oaks goes to the inside lane. we got a great battle for third spot. And Ricky Thompson, only two car lengths behind Jody Swamp. As Swamp had that top spot all to himself, now Ricky Thompson closes in, trying to take away that lead. As they work the back straight away into turns three and four, Swamp on the bottom, Ricky Thompson right there with him, battle for third going on, Claudia Tarbell working that outside groove, and making it work so far, as she's still holding off Dion Oaks for that fourth, or for that third spot rather, Oaks is fourth, and Woodward still holding off the field back there in the number five spot as the Bulldog starts to charge through and make his way to the front of the field, and Stefan Lebrun in the number six is pull it to the infield. And Bulldog off the pace, big tangle in turn number two. Bulldog off the pace, Corey Wheeler, and I believe it was, and, and it was, uh, Louis One of the couple of the best on the dirt circuit for sure. Green flag is back out, and Jody Swamp is back to the number one spot. Ricky Thompson looking to take it away from him, though, as he is right there on the back doorstep. Charges after him down the back stretch. He's got to run on Jody as he hit turn number three. But Jody Swamp is not going to give this one up easily. A little bit of contact through three and four. Ricky Thompson trying to move Swamp up the speedway. Swamp will have none of it. Jody Swamp pins that car down on the inside lane. He says, if you want to get by me, you're going to have to work a little bit harder than that, son. As Jody Swamp leads Ricky Thompson, Claudia Tarbell, Dion Oaks runs fourth. The 56 of Billy Woodward rounds out your top five. Again, Thompson gets into Swamp, and this time, Thompson gets the short end of the deal. Oh, and Rod Tarbell and and William Adams almost get into the front straightaway wall as they came out of turn four. So a lot of contact on the speedway. Well, it's starting to come down to closing time here, Bill, as Jody Swamp is not going to be moved off the bottom side of the racetrack. And he leads the way right now, but Ricky Thompson has been right there with him. The last couple of laps or so with five to go, Dion Oaks has now taken that third spot away from Claudia Tarbell. Tarbell holding on to that fourth spot, doing a great job out there, running with some of the top drivers in this division. As Billy Woodward Jr. right there behind him, here comes Rod Tarbell up on the top side, trying to get around Woodward on the front straightaway. And Rock Oban holds on to position number seven. It's Harvey Arquette Jr. in eighth. Ninth is Adams and tenth is Alan Peters in the number 88. And Jody Swamp still has the lead, but Ricky Thompson is working him over hard off of turn number four. He's got to run down the front straightaway. They're side by side for the top spot in turns one and two. Ricky Thompson finally got the inside lane he wanted. He shoots underneath Jody Swamp and to the top spot. Ricky Thompson, your new leader, gets by Jody Swamp coming up on two to go. Could another one have gone away for Jody Swamp? We'll have to wait and see. Two more laps to go. Ricky Thompson going for win number four on the year. And I'll tell you what, 
he has been a threat all season long in this tr chase for the track title here at Mohawk, and he'd love nothing better than to get back to victory lane. White flag in the air this time by as Thompson looking to take it home, but Jody Swamp has got other ideas, Bill, as he works the outside groove. Jody Swamp trying to close in just a lap and a half to go, or uh, just a car length half car length and a half behind as they go into three and four for the final time. Ricky Thompson sets through three and four. Ricky Thompson will get his fourth win of the season. Jody Swamp finishes second. Dion Oaks third. Claudia Tarbell fourth. And Rod Tarbell rounds out the top five. Mohawk on Wednesday night joining the World of Outlaws Late Models. Right now we're going to go down to Victory Lane and Tim Boltz Tim, take it away as Ricky Thompson pulls into victory lane. And he's going to spin it around here and get the good side to the fans. Not a bad way to celebrate your birthday either with win number four of the year. And here comes the entire crew. And, of course, as we've seen with uh, Ricky Thompson's victory lane celebrations, the entire grandstands will pretty much empty here as here they come on the front stretch. How about a round of applause for him? Win number four on the season for Ricky Thompson. And we'll step in here as he's getting the helmet off here first. It's a little hot in there. Win number four of the season for you, buddy. I'll tell you what, you know, Right up there in the thick of things for the track title, too. That's got to make you feel good. Oh, uh, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. And uh, I'm also understanding it's your birthday today. You've never won on your birthday for before, have you? No, nope, never. <laughs> so, uh, your car was running very, very well out here tonight, of course. You know, you could seem like you could go bottom or top. Wherever you wanted to go, really, car seemed like it was handling. Yeah, the car was awesome. I mean, couldn't ask for anything better. <laughs> I know you got a ton of people behind you to thank and all the fans, too. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Anything else you want to add there, bud? Um, I'd like to thank my sponsors, the Tiger Bots, um, SNL Construction, RT Racing, Fast Horse, um, Big Ball, and uh, special thanks to Wayne Bang and Al Mack. Well, congratulations, Ricky. Win number four of the year. Let's keep it going. All right. Win number four for Ricky Thompson. Rush 22 of Roy Duarte, 19 of John Lazor, 15 of Ryan Helm, 45 of Preston Forbes, 3 of Derek Martin, and the 95 of Rick Miller completes your starting lineup. We are racing as they go through 3 wide through turns 1 and 2 and down the back stretch, 4 wide out of turn number 2. And I'll tell you what, Clayton Benedict and Pat O'Brien won out on that battle for sure as Mike Perani got shuffled back about three spots. And Ryan Jacobs and Pat O'Brien make heavy contact in turn one. O'Brien's able to continue, but Jacobs lost a ton of spots out there. Meanwhile, up in front, that track championship deal still continues as Jeff Sykes, former champion here back in 03, works in that number one spot. Gardner Stone and Pat O'Brien are top three. Kerry Torrance goes to the high side of Ryan Jacobs. Jacobs trying to get around him as the 55 of Perry Francis goes low. Casey Swamp, slow off turn two. He drops a bunch of spots deep in the field. Up front, Jeff Sykes lead. Gardner Stone runs second. Pat O'Brien runs third. And as Sykes motors away from the rest of the field, Gardner Stone and Pat O'Brien putting on a pretty good show for the runner-up spot as Stone has the second spot second position here and Pat O'Brien holding on to third. Clayton Benedict fourth. Tom Stewart into LaSalle Motorsports 96 holding on to that fifth spot. Then it's Perry Francis, Tom Stone, Kerry Terrence, Ryan Jacobs and Dave Hayes up here top ten. Mike Pilotti, after starting on the front row, shuffled well deep in the field as Tom Jock Jr. gets by him. He battles side by side, and, and there are battles all over the speedway. Drivers having to adjust their lanes as the track a little bit different than they've had in previous weeks. Up front and Preston Forbes rolls to a stop in turn three. Forbes brings out the caution. And you notice Todd Stone's right front tire may be going soft. I thought it was Gardner's, but Todd Stone's right front tire, if you could see it as he comes by, it definitely is going sour on him. And he's about, a, he, he's just found out, I think. Yeah, and that's not the way to find out, of course. He was hoping to find out on a caution flag. And Tommy, Jock, and Dave Hayslip get into one another, and you see Todd Stone kind of bottleneck the field up there. And he's going to try as best he can to limp it back pit side, but... Ryan Helm, 45 of Preston Forbes. The 
95 Rick Miller and Todd Stone in the 1X back out on the speedway. Brand new right front tire on his 1X and he'll continue on. Green Flying has returned to the speedway and Pat O'Brien is now chasing after Jeff Sykes for that number one spot. And Preston Forbes having all sorts of issues in turn number two, bringing the caution back out again. one here last September in the Dirt Car 358 Championship event. Sykes will lead around at turn number four. Green flag is back on and Jeff Sykes is great on these restarts. He's able to get away from him. Three wide in about 10th, 11th, and 12th right there with Roy Tarbell, Dave Naslip, and Mike Parati. All three track champions there. And Kerry Tarrant shoots to the high side the fourth spot on the restart. So Tarrant's picking up two quick spots. And Torrance now challenging to the inside of Gardner. Starting gets up. Torrance into the Uke tires. And we talked about bad luck. Oh, and Casey Swamp hits the Uke tire that got kicked out into the speedway. Preston Forbes, another wild ride off of turn two. And this is exactly what we documented Crazy right here. Tim Schaefer Knight at the Nationals for sure. And glad to see him get the win. Back under green. And Jeff Sykes is getting those great restarts once again here as he gets away from O'Brien by about a couple of car lengths, but Pat the veteran knows his way around this racetrack, closes the gap on the backstretch. Sykes leads, Pat O'Brien second, Gardner Stone third, Todd Stewart fourth, Perry Francis goes to the high side of Clayton Benedict, battling for fifth spot, but he knows he's got to play it cautious. Francis, and you see it right there, coming out of turn two, Francis lets off the throw rather than risk tangling up with Clayton Benedict coming out of turn two. Tom Jock and Francis, looks like there's a rough spot in turn four that saw Francis lose some momentum. And you can see Perry trying that outside groove as they work down the back straightaway, and he's alongside of Tommy Jock to try to pick off the number six spot. Driver's getting a pretty good run through the middle part of the turn, but it looks like coming off that outside groove is very, very rough up there, very choppy as they come down the back straightaway. Jeff Sykes is the man on top of the heat right now, but Pat O'Brien is closing the gap ever so slightly into turn number four. Field now starting to string out. The drivers can really go racing. And Perry Francis still eyeing that outside lane, trying to get around Clayton Benedict. As Benedict's car seems like it's not handling the best, but he's able to hold in the low lane. And of course, you have to go up high. High is challenging tonight. As Francis tries to go up high to get around Benedict again, as we are halfway, halfway. 13 laps complete, 12 more to go. And Jeff Sykes looking to get back to victory lane here. It's been a while since he's been in the winner's circle, but it's been a while since he's been in a modified, too. So it would be nice to see Jeff get back to victory lane, but he's got Pat O'Brien to deal with right now. And Pat's not going to let him go away quietly here as Gardner Stone holds on to third. And then it's the 96 of Stewart holding on to position number four. And then a good battle right there between Clayton Benedict and Perry Francis for the fifth spot. Jeff Sykes won in the low lane in three and four, in the middle lane in one and two. So he's definitely picked a distinctive lane that nobody else is really running. Pat O'Brien running second. They're running away and hiding from the rest of the field, but now lap traffic is coming into play. Jeff Sykes and Pat O'Brien coming up on lap cars. That's going to make it interesting as O'Brien will try to take this moment to reel in the leader. And he comes up on the Rick Miller number 95 as they head through turns three and four. Sykes on the bottom. Miller going to the top side and he will stay up there to allow the leaders to get on by. Sykes gets by cleanly. Pat O'Brien will try the same in turns one and two. Gardner Stone having a great run for himself up to position number three with the 96 of Todd Stewart back there in spot number four. Then here comes Perry Francis in the number 55. As he works on that number five spot. Clayton Benedict is sixth followed by Tommy Jock Jr. in seventh. John Lazor is eighth. Ninth to Dave Hayslip. Todd Stone after that flat right front tire has come up into the top ten and rounding it out in the 10th spot. And now Todd Stewart goes to the high side of Gardner Stone. Side-by-side -side battle for third spot. Stewart will get the third spot. I tell you what, Junior David's probably a happy car owner right now seeing his machine at the front of the field. 
as he works off corners three and four. Sykes is on the bottom side of the speedway. He's got five more to go, and he's got one of the toughest competitors in 358 modified competition right behind him, and Pat O'Brien holding on to the number two spot. Now Gardner Stone has lost the third spot to Todd Stewart. Perry Francis comes up to challenge. He'll get by for fourth, moving Gardner Stone back to fifth. Perry Francis making the most of this opportunity up to fourth spot. Every one of those points will come counting next Friday night. Meanwhile, Jeff Sykes still has about a far car length lead over Pat O'Brien. Then a big gap back to the 96 of Todd Stewart. Then another big gap to the number 55 of Perry Francis, the X1 of Gardner Stone, the 12 of Clayton Benedict. And we've got a battle for the top spot as Jeff Sykes bobbled just a little bit in turns three and four. Pat O'Brien closes in and turns one and two. They're stuck behind a lap car of Roy Tarbell as they head down the back straightaway. White flag will be out this time by Sykes to the bottom. O'Brien to the high side. He gets held up by Tarbell off of turn number four. White flag in the air for Jeff Sykes. Pat O'Brien still holding on to that second spot, but it's going to be a nail biter right down to the finish. Ryan Jacobs, a lap car, right in the middle of the racetrack as Casey Swamp stops to the outside on the back stretch. Checkered flag is out this time by, and the David Motorsports number four will go to victory lane with Jeff Sykes behind the wheel. Pat O'Brien will come home in second. Todd Stewart, a great run to third. Perry Francis does a nice job up to the fourth spot. Gardner Stone with his first top five of the year. Home in the number There's five. Jenna David in the number two. She'll be coming up. Boat rear quarter panel memorializing Mitch Jock, uh, driver of this ride earlier this year who we lost earlier in the season. And now the Junior David Motorsports team rolls in the victory lane as Jenna David, Junior, and Tracy David's daughter rolls in the victory lane to join Jeff Sykes in congratulating him on his feature. Here comes Junior Tracy, the entire David Motorsports Warrior Racing Sweet Dreams entry. Ladies and gentlemen, he's out of the car. Have a round of applause for Jeff Sykes. And Jeff and, and Junior, great moment of celebration here at Victory Lane. And quick moment here. You know, Jeff, we spent about 10 minutes talking here earlier tonight before the races. And, uh, of course, making note the car looked so fast last week. And I said, man, it seems like it's going to be just a matter of time until you get to victory lane. I didn't think about three hours later it would happen that quickly. Great run. I mean, you, you were pretty much in a class by yourself even working through lap traffic tonight. Well, I don't know what to say. Uh, first, I got to thank uh, Junior and Tracy and uh, all their family. I know they've been through a rough times, and this one's for Mitch. So uh, we got to get that one uh, behind us. Uh, it's been tough. Uh, I came in uh, just uh, unforeseen uh, circumstances, so it's it's a tough uh, way to win. But let me tell you why this place is awesome. I love it here, and uh, this this is a rocket ship. Uh, I'm glad he. Uh, Glad he let me run it because it, it's a blast. And when I beat uh, Pat O'Brien, uh, I feel pretty good. Well, you know, a couple of formal champions dueling for the win and heavy lap traffic. I mean, you know, you and Pat both won in the days when it was named Frogtown, and it was kind of like a throwback because a lot of those wins in the past, they come in heavy lap traffic, and it's not just motor. It's how to handle the car, uh, and, and we threw a lot of traffic. And you guys both had a great battle going down to the final couple of laps. And I, it was... Uh, it's been a long time. My mouth was uh, really dry in the last couple laps, and uh, I got lab traffic. I could, I knew I could hear him, but uh, there's a ton of lights back there now. And back when I used to race here, I couldn't see any cars. But now it, this place is phenomenal. I, I love this place. I just got to thank Tracy and uh, Junior. They, they, uh, they, they spend their whole uh, time at racing. And uh, he told me to, uh, three weeks ago he just wants, he wants to race and win. So that's what we're here for. Well, win number one, I know you guys are looking at Labor Day next weekend, the spot at Syracuse, the Super Dirt Race. Uh, you guys have got to feel great going into the big championship races in the next few weeks. Uh, I like 50 lappers, and uh, he mentioned Syracuse a couple weeks ago, so I kind of lit my eyes up. So uh, we got a lot of work to do, uh, but uh, we'll uh, 
we'll uh, work at that later, but uh, we want to get the 50 lap for next week. And um, I just got to thank all these guys back here, that all the crew, they, gotta, they put in a lot of time uh, working on the car. Dave and my family comes up and helps. And But it's been uh, kind of a quick three weeks uh, here from not racing in the last couple of years. And it's uh, been kind of a quick turnaround. Well, congratulations. Great run tonight. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, have a round of applause for Jeff Sykes, Junior, and Tracy David. The grand winners and Christian Smoker looking to stop the streak as he comes down the front straightaway. Winner's on the gas. He gets a great start. Green flag is in the air. Field working nicely into turns one and two. Brad Winters on the bottom side. Here comes Sheldon Hugworth with Christian Smoke right there behind him. Rabby comes up to position number four. And Dylan Evoy lost a couple of spots on that start, but he's able to get back by Tom Benedict to pick off the number five spot. Up in front, though, Brad Winters does lead lap number one. Christian Smoke still working that outside groove. This is kind of a uh, throwback to the last qualifying heat race we had, but Christian Smoke gets the best of Brad Winters in turns three and four, and Smoke's going to go the long way around, and he'll pick off the lead as they come down the front stretch. Christian Smoke uses the high line to go to the top spot. Brad Winter settles into second. Chris Rabby and Sheldon Hogworth still side by side for third. Rabby inches ahead down into turn three, but he's still going to have his hands full as they come out of three and four. Hogworth runs the low line. And Rabby making that outside groove work. He slams the door on Hogworth, picks off the number three spot. Now he'll chase after Brad Winters in the number 92 as they work down the back straightaway. Now Dylan Evoy sees daylight. He'll try to go to the number four spot as they go into turns three and four. And Evoy will slide up in front of Hogworth. He'll pick off fourth as they come down the front straightaway with four laps up on the board. Well, and you know, by now, a lot of times it's already over. But this time, Rabby just barely gets by Brad Winters, and now he's got to try and reel in Christian Smoke. Smoke with about a three-car length lead over Chris Rabby, but Rabby is coming on strong on lap number five. Smoke has the top spot, and he's making that outside groove work very nicely for him, but Chris Rabby is on a mission. He's won the last seven consecutive races here at Mohawk in the Sportsman Class, 12 overall, and would love nothing better than to get by Smoke. But I tell you what, Christian Smoke is not letting him come up the challenge very easy here as he's got that outside groove working. It's starting to pull away just a little bit here. Rabbi, oh, and trouble in turn four as Jenna David hits a couple of uke tires. She got in a scramble with Josh Jock and the number 80 of Barber pulls out right in front of the oh, leader. Now let's try again. Let's hopefully have a clean restart this time. And that's one of those decisions you rarely see happen in racing, but Sheldon Hugworth definitely will benefit from this one. Green flag is out. And Christian Smoke trying that outside groove, and he's going to get the lead once again from Rabby down the back stretch. Could we see a changing of the guards here? Smoke leads on the high side, Rabby on the low side, and Smoke is going to maintain that top spot out of turn four, but now Rabby powers low into turn four. Chris Rabby will lead by half a car length, but what's going to happen as they go through three and four? Is Smoke back up on the high side and back to the top spot. Well, I almost spoke too soon, but Christian Smoke is making a race out of this one. And Rabby down low, trying to get by, but Christian Smoke will have none of it. Holding off your defending Mr. Dirkar Sportsman champion and Dylan Evoy, working that outside groove as well. He's starting to close in on the leaders, but Rabby gets a great run off the bottom side of turn number two. He'll try to take the lead in turn number three, but Smoke fights right back on the top side. And he just about got up into the wall area, into the loose stuff on the top side. But Rabby does take away that number one spot. Christian Smoke back to the run. And Dylan Evoy. Back there in third, followed by Travis Beck and Brad Winters completing the top five. Well, and now with Rabbi out front, he can move up just a little bit and run the line he really wants to run, just a touch higher than he was running before. Dylan Evoy now challenging Christian Smoke. Smoke, that high line was working for him just a little bit out of rhythm coming out of the turn a couple of laps ago, and that cost him the lead. Oh, and Smoke loses a right rear tire. Heads up in the pit area as that 10 laps complete. Nine laps. Evoy and Rabby looks like they make a little bit of contact. Winters tries to sneak to the inside as they straighten out single file. Green is back out on the speedway. Uh, that was a little bumper tag maneuver there by Evoy. He knows he's got a pretty good race car right now. And he wanted to get going. And Rabby sticking down to that inside group. But Dylan Evoy is right there with him off of turn number four. Rabby pushes up the racetrack just a little bit. Here comes Evoy making a charge to the outside part of the speedway. And he's going to go the long way around Rabby, or at least try to down the backstretch. 
Evil Eye giving it his best shot as he goes high. Chris Rabby's car likes the low side, but Evil Eye, the, he's Christian Smoke showed him way to the high side, and now we got a side-by-side -side battle for the lead. And Tim, when was the last time somebody passed Chris Rabby in the feature for the lead? It hasn't happened yet, but it's real close. Well, we could have it right here as they are battling very hard for that top spot. These two drivers know each other very, very well. have raced their entire careers together through go-karts and now right into the sportsman class. And Rabby's got that inside groove, the groove that he likes as Christine Martin dives to the infield here and will park it on the inside of the front stretch with only six laps to go. And the yellow flag is back out here. Side And Rabby's car does not seem to like the high side tonight. Green flag does return to the speedway though and uh, both drivers still sticking with their same lines, although Evoy, he dropped to the bottom there. It looks like he lost a little bit of ground to Rabby down the backstretch, a couple of car lengths. Tom Benedict dives underneath Sheldon Hogworth. He moves up to sixth spot. Brett Kelsey got up to fifth. Now Hogworth goes back on the high side of Benedict. He will go back up to the sixth spot. Meanwhile, Brad Winters and Travis Back battling side by side for third. That's a good battle for the third spot, the show position. As they head down the back stretch, winners and back still side by side for third. As back runs the high line, Brad Winners runs the low line. And Brent Kelsey holding on to that number five spot, doing a wonderful job out there in that number 30 machine. Tom Benedict is sixth. Dylan Sallows having a great run up to seventh. Now is Sheldon Hooker in eighth. Ninth is Jenna David and Robbie Ezard having a great run out there as well, completing the top ten in tenth. Travis back up to third using the high lane around Brad Winters. Meanwhile, Chris Rabby has kind of checked out from Dylan Eboy as we come up on two to go, two to go. Chris Rabby has about a four car length lead over Dylan Eboy. Tom Benedict very slow. Oh, and Benedict! Tang is very slow out of turn two. You see the right front suspension broke. Sheldon Hugworth piles in. in. The Enduro 100 lapper, and that will bring down the final checkered flag of the 2010 season. Speaking of checkered flags, one lap, four turns, checkered flag will fly next time around. Chris Rabby goes low, Evoy goes high. Evoy trying to reel him in, a car, uh, two car lengths back. Down the back stretch for the final time. Evoy swings it high, Rabby runs low. Evoy's just gonna run out of time as Chris Rabby will get the win. Evoy second, Travis back down to Brad. accept the checkered flag in the uh, trophy from Parkway Country Polaris. We are gonna go down trackside to Tim Baltz as he and Chris Rabby We'll get to chat once again. It's almost like their weekly get-together down in Victory Lane here at Mohawk International Raceway. So it's 13th win on the year and eighth in a row. How about a round of applause for Chris Rabby? And this is pretty much like a weekly occurrence. Eight in a row, my friend. I'll tell you what, you have just keeping the roll going. Win number 26 on the year. Yeah, we, uh, we had work for this one a little bit tonight. Uh, okay. uh, real good battle with uh, Christian Smoke there early on. I'm not too sure what happened to him. Uh, uh, something obviously on the right rear, and then uh, Dylan showed me uh, the nose a few times up on the outside, but uh, the car was uh, not too bad once we got a little bit of air pressure built up in the right rear and uh, helped free it up. Yeah, now the track, you know, there's still a little bit of moisture left on the racetrack, but uh, you could, you pretty much were staying down low. Uh, did, did you think of trying the outside when you saw Dylan show the nose? Uh, I was running the, uh, the outside a little bit there early on. It's just uh, such a long way around, right. and uh, if you can get the car to tuck around the bottom, uh, it's definitely faster. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you, you know, going into last week, Course, set the all-time win record for a single season. You're slowly approaching in on the all-time overall win record of Steve Hall, 85 or at 76 now. Is that kind of creeping into your mind? Do you think he'll get it, or is that the least of your worries right now? Yeah, that's, that's the last thing on our yeah. minds. Uh, you know, we're just going to try to win as many races as we can this year, and uh, 
you know, the, I think the goal with where we're at right now is 30, but uh, you never know in racing. You go on a terrible streak and uh, not right. win for a couple months. Absolutely. And uh, you get a ton of people behind this operation to thank, too. Yeah, I got to thank all my sponsors. These guys, uh, week in, week out, support me. It's uh, certainly a, you know, a fabulous job by the whole team. Absolutely. Win number 13 on the year. Let's keep it up, bud. All right. Thanks, Tim. No problem. Well, number six is 67 of John Oliver from Burke, the 3B of Trent Benedict from Aquasasti. 52 of Tammy Rogers from Waddington, 14 of Jason Kreitz, 22 of John Green, 30 of Thunder Anderson Jr., Thunder Anderson Jr., 1A of Nolan Swamp, 37 of Daryl Mitchell, and the 8 of Gary Sharlow, a late arrival. That is your starting lineup. We are underway down the backstretch. Derek Colbert challenges Henry Lamick, a side-by-side -side battle for the lead. Going into turns 1 and 2, Derek Colbert will leave out the one, Joey Foster. Up high out of turn number four. 52 of Tammy Rogers, 1A of Nolan Swamp, 37 of Derek. 8 of Gary Charlo completes your field as we are green out of turn number four. Trent Benedict's 3B very slow bottles up the field behind him. Up front, Derek Colbert retakes the lead. Side-by-side -side battle for second between Scott Mayer and the 21G and the 55 of Henry Lanica. Then the two whites... Bennett White in the 68 and Owen White in the number six side by side behind him battling for fourth and four wide out of turn number four. Well, they thought about it, but then they decided to stack it back up two wide, two rows back. And Scott Muir has Henry Lamica to his outside, and now Bennett White's going to make it three wide. He'll go from fifth all the way up to the number two spot. Owen White's going to try three wide as well. Pete Tsunami thought about four wide for a minute. Thought better of it though, he settles in behind Owen White and he'll take away the number four, or five spot rather. Scott Muir gets it back though in turn number one. Derek Colbert leads, Bennett White still looking for his first win of the season. Owen White follows him into third. And then Henry Lamica and Pete Tsunami side by side for fourth. We got a three wide battle for the fourth spot coming out of turn four. And your leader Derek Colbert is Pretty much checked out on everybody here as he's got that outside groove working for him. But Bennett White's down there on the bottom side with Owen White up on the top side. As they head through turns three or four, Owen White charges around the outside part of the speedway. He'll try to go up to the number two spot. And at the line, he will get it. Pete Tsunami right there behind these two drivers in that fourth position. Scott Muir and Henry, Henry Lamica going at it here for fifth and sixth. Nolan Swamp is seventh, followed by Jonathan Oliver in eighth. Brad Fish is ninth, and John Green completes the top ten. Derek Colbert coming up on the halfway point. Six down and six to go. Owen White to second. Bennett White runs third. Pete Tsunami runs fourth. Great battles for second through fourth. As the bandit field starts to string out, Gary Charlo's made up a lot of traffic as he started last in the field and just barely outside the top ten right now. And Derek Colbert still with the lead, but Owen White is closing the gap ever so slightly as they head down the front straightaway here. Tell you what, Owen White would love nothing better than to grab his first ever Bandit feature win here tonight. Well, he's had so much success in the Enduro division. Now he wants to go. And we've got a caution for a two-car incident. Andrew Fish and Tammy Rogers involved. Green flag is in the air. We're underway once again, and Derek Colbert wasting no time. Jumping up into the top spot here as they work down the back straightaway this time. Owen White settles into the number two spot. Here comes Pete Tsunami down to the inside. Bennett White right there with him in fourth. They drag race into turns three and four, and that's going to allow for Bennett White to pick off the number, or excuse me, to drop back to the number four spot. A tsunami goes to third. Owen White dives down low. He picks off the lead from Derek Colbert as they work in turns one and two. Colbert gets up out of the groove just a little bit, allowing Pete Tsunami to close in. Here comes Bennett White back there and fourth. Scott Mayer a little bit out of it there in the number five spot. As the field rolls into turns three and four, it's a four-car dance to the win here. As Owen White looking to take it home here, nine laps are on the board, three more to go. Can we get our second first-time winner of 2010 in this Bandit division? We'll have to wait and see. Lap machines of Trent Benedict and Andrew Fish, they get up out of the way of the leaders. As two more laps to go for Owen White, and this would be huge for him if he could pull it off. 
Right now in position number two is Derek Colbert looking to close the gap down the back straightaway this time as he heads returns one and two. Beat Tsunami looking for win number three of the season down to the inside. In the number three machine, couldn't quite get the run he was looking for. Down the back stretch is Bennett White working from spot number four. And Tsunami washes up the racetrack. Just about got into Derek Colbert. White flag is in the air for Owen White. He's won many features in the enduro division we had here some time ago. He was the first champion in that division as well. As Jonathan Oliver's number 67 is stopped here to the infield. And checkered flag will be out this time by an Owen White will finally get his first ever bandit feature win. Derek Colbert, Pete Tsunami, and Bennett White, your top four. Then comes Scott Meir in the 21 machine as Jonathan Oliver gets out of that car. Fire crew is right over there on the scene. So another first time winner. In the bandit class is Owen White, who, as I mentioned earlier, won many races in to close the year out as far as regular season points are concerned next Friday night as Owen White comes down the front straightaway. And Billy Smith, it's all yours, my friend. We got another first-time winner in victory lane. Former enduro champion. Used to drive the O.N. when he ran in the enduro division. You see the pit crew and friends and family running out to congratulate him as almost everybody makes it to victory lane. Takes a moment, gets congratulations from his brother Austin. And first career win in the bandit division for Owen White. And wrapping up on Parkway Country Players tonight, he's out of the car, hopping around to applause for Owen White, winner in the Bandit Division, first win on the season. <laughs> Takes a moment to get the earplugs out, get the helmet off. All smiles. <laughs> Let me get a couple as it's overheating in victory lane, but it made it as far as it needed to go. Let me get a quick word here as he gets the congratulatory trophy. Owen, you dominated the Enduro Division many years ago, drove tow truck for a few years, jumped back into the Bandit Division, first time racing regular stock car division on a weekly basis. We're fast out of the gate. Welcome to victory lane. Man, great run tonight. Oh, it, it was great. I'm so happy. Um, I finally got a, a better start in Spy, and it finally... Um, it came came to me. My fan broke. It started overheating. I was like, "Come on, four more laps." <laughs> well, you know that 12, uh, those twelve lap features—they don't seem like a long distance, but they can take forever, especially with cautions on the last couple of laps. Oh yeah, especially starting last the last couple of weeks. But oh, <laughs> it was a good race. Well, and you know, Derek's car seemed to like it up high, and and you seem to really be able to pin it down on the inside lane and get by him. Oh yeah, I tried going high with this car. It just I can go right down low and just pass them, pull them, pull them right out. <laughs> now, uh, uh, tell the fans real quickly the story about getting involved in the car. I understand uh, your grandfather, Dennis, bought somebody else a race car. <laughs> and what happened after that? Yeah, he bought um, my nephew or my uncle, my cousin Benny, a car. Then <laughs> I was all mad about that, so he went to Cornwall and bought this car for me. And you brought it to Victory Lane, and Bennett's had all season to get into Victory Lane. And you got it here after four or five weeks. Yeah, well, my car's a little more power, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. I was giving you a chance to throw Bennett under the bus. Oh, come on. Hey, great run, Owen. Anybody else you want to thank? Uh, any sponsors, crew members you want to thank for tonight? I just want to thank my grandparents, Dennis, Yvonne, and um, Boo 3 Racing, Mike Phillips. They're up there. Uh, I want to thank Swamp's Performance, Casey Swamp, and he bought me the tires, and I just thank all my family <laughs> for watching me. <laughs> Well, great run tonight, and uh, good luck Wednesday night in front of the World of Outlaws. Big crowd. Maybe you can make it back-to-back -back wins. Oh, I hope so. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Owen White, winner here on Parkway Country Players Night here at Mohawk International Raceway. Tim, back up to you. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, World of Outlaws.